Hello everyone, in this video we are going to discuss about hypothalamus. The hypothalamus receives vital sensory information including input from area postrema which is located in the dorsal medulla which helps detect toxins and trigger vomiting. So input from the vascular organ of the lamina terminalis which senses changes in the osmolarity through osmoreceptors. This is especially important for maintaining water balance. So these are the two important inputs what hypothalamus receives. Now let me discuss about the hypothalamic nuclei. The hypothalamus is organized into several nuclei. You can see these are like a clusters, right? So clusters of neurons, each with distinct functions. So therefore, let's break them down. So first is the supraoptic group. We also call it as the anterior group. In this, the first one is the anterior hypothalamic nucleus. So this anterior hypothalamic nucleus controls heat dissipation through parasympathetic pathways. If damaged, it can cause hyperthermia. And second one is the suprachiasmatic nucleus. We call it as our body clock. It regulates the circadian rhythm by receiving light signals directly from the retina. So lesions here may cause insomnia or other sleep disorders. Next one in this group is the supraoptic nucleus. So this supraoptic nucleus helps regulate water balance by producing antidiuretic hormone and also another hormone is oxytocin. So these hormones are transported to the posterior pituitary and released into the circulation. The injury here can lead to diabetes insipidus. So next is the paraventricular nucleus. This paraventricular nucleus of the hypothalamus, which is a part of anterior group, produces corticotropin releasing hormone, thyroid releasing hormone, somatostatin, antidiuretic hormone and oxytocin. So this nucleus also contributes to water regulation and hormone control. And final one in this group is a preoptic nucleus. So this preoptic nucleus manages sexual function and thermoregulation and damage of this nucleus may cause conditions like Kalman syndrome. So all these are the list of nucleus what you can see comes under the anterior group. So after the anterior group, let's move on to the second group called as tuberal group. We call it as a middle group also. And the nucleus include dorsomedial hypothalamic nucleus. And this dorsomedial hypothalamic nucleus regulates appetite, thirst, stress response and circadian rhythm. And injury to this nucleus may result in loss of appetite or thirst. Now next one is the ventromedial nucleus. So this ventromedial nucleus is very famous for its function for the satiety. So it is responsible for the satiety. So it's stimulated by leptin. If destroyed, it can cause hyperphagia, obesity, right? And next one is the arcuate nucleus. So this arcuate nucleus sends signal to the infundibulum and regulates the release of hormones from the pituitary. It also inhibits prolactin and gonadotropin releasing hormone via dopaminergic neurons and damage to this here results in neuroendocrine dysregulation. Now next group is the mammillary group. We also call it as a posterior group which includes posterior hypothalamic nucleus and next is the mammillary body. So this posterior hypothalamic nucleus conserves heat via sympathetic activity and damage here can cause hypothermia. And next is the mammillary body. And this mammillary body is very essential for episodic memory. So it receives signals from the hippocampus and projects to the anterior thalamic nucleus. So damage here causes Wernicke's encephalopathy which is seen in thiamine deficiency. And next is the preoptic group. In the preoptic group, we have the lateral nucleus. This lateral nucleus regulates hunger and stimulated by ghrelin and inhibited by leptin. So injury results in weight loss, anorexia and failure to thrive, especially in children. So all these are the nuclei of the hypothalamus and its important functions. So finally, let me talk about the blood supply to the hypothalamus. So for the blood supply to the hypothalamus, the anterior hypothalamus is supplied by anterior cerebral and anterior communicating arteries. 
and the tuberal part of the hypothalamus is supplied by the posterior communicating artery and finally the posterior hypothalamus is supplied by the posterior cerebral artery and the basilar artery so this is the blood supply to the hypothalamus so by this we have completed important uh, points about the hypothalamic nucleus as well as its blood supply